Aha. All right, some GPU brackets acquired. I got a massive four slot GPU because I've always been curious to see what orientation for the GPU is best for best cooling performance because, you know, getting massive GPUs is becoming a little bit more common these days. And this new Lian Li, not so new, but the latest O11 Dynamic Evolution is absolutely perfect for this test. Now the O11 has a very special place in my review history because it has gone through a few iterations with constant improvements to the user experience and today we're testing its full versatility because it is one of the only cases on the market to allow four different GPU orientations, standard, vertical, upright and reverse and <laughs> let's hope it does not disappoint. Now the glass at the front is all fine and dandy but did you know we have a front mesh kit that allows us to install fans here instead of having this beautiful tempered glass with these brackets and the actual mesh panel. Glass is off. Notice we have two mounting locations for 120 and 140 fans. That's awesome. Mesh panel going in place. Not bad at all, huh? If you have not yet worked with an O11 Dynamic Evo, let me tell you the experience is absolutely incredible. You can call me a Lee and Lee fanboy just because all the uh, brackets are removable for installation of its, uh, outside of the case, which makes things so much simpler. Put this back for now. The top bracket is removable from the interior. It's held in with two screws at the back and these little pegs at the front. So you can kind of secure the bracket in place and then screw it back in. Looking behind the case, we have this bracket that has some depth flexibility, just like on uh, the Lancol 3, for example. So just uh, lift this lever and the side bracket comes off, so easy installation, but you can also rotate it to either give you depth on the interior on the, or the exterior for easy installation of whatever you might want to do later on. So this is absolutely brilliant. And by rotating this bracket, we can mount this upright vertical GPU bracket so we can have the GPU on the side of the motherboard. That's pretty cool. I am of course using the Unifans because they're freaking gorgeous and so easy to daisy chain and mount. It's products like these that make rebuilding computers fun, especially when we have to test multiple configurations. Be ready to be captivated by a fusion of vivid colors, deeper blacks, and a wicked fast 240 hertz refresh rate with Corsair's Xenion Flex gaming monitor. Featuring the world's first bendable OLED display in a stunning 45 inch WQHD ultra wide aspect ratio, immerse yourself in gaming and other productive tasks. You get all the extra goodies for ultimate speed and precision within a game, get quick access to a few USB ports at the front and plenty of other display connectivity options at the back. And all this tech is backed with their advanced burn-in protection and a three-year warranty. If you're looking to flex your gaming setup, look no further than Corsair Xenion Flex. Learn more down below. All right, so for our first configuration on the GPU and the horizontal orientation, this is like 99% of systems. There are two benefits here. So number one is that we have this direct bottom intake directly for the GPU. Number two is that if you're using a massive CPU heatsink for air cooling, it's not going to interfere with the GPU. So that's a positive. And despite having this backplate that is very pretty, that matches my motherboard, we are losing a little bit on the aesthetics, you know, simply because you might want to showcase your GPU properly. And so first I want to set a baseline for all the testing with the GPU fans at 100% to get our best case scenario. And with the cooler this big, the temperatures are pretty good, like you would expect. But for a more realistic result that is not blasting your ears, all the testing was done at 60% fan speed on the GPU. And while temperatures do rise, they're still super low. So let's vertical this setup, shall we? The vertical bracket is six slots, so we can fit it in the top six slots position, uh, giving us plenty of clearance away from the bottom fans. This goes in first. Okay, that looks okay. Also, you can see we have three positions for our riser cable mount, so that if you need additional clearance away from the motherboard, you have that option. And the ribbon cable is flexible enough, so don't be worried about you know, giving it some force in order to flex it out of the way for the GPU. Installing the graphics card after mounting the bracket into the frame is a little bit difficult because we don't have that clean of an access for our thumb screws for the graphics card itself. So I would mount the graphics card onto the bracket and then mount the whole thing into the case instead. Okay, this is a little more challenging than I thought. Look at that sag though, jeez. You might need a little platform over here, for example, and maybe even the platform for the GPU so it doesn't sag off the bracket itself. As you can see, there's quite a bit of sag both from the GPU and the bracket. So I found that uh, putting some sort of a little 
spacer, right? Underneath the bracket alleviates most of the sag, and you can also put something between the GPU and the bracket as well, just so that the top end or the back end has a little bit of that extra elevation. But otherwise, let's power this on, see what it looks like. I gotta say, I love what the vertical GPU does. It makes your graphics card like the center of attention without compromising on any of the other hardware that we had installed prior. So this bracket, for example, is a Gen 4 riser cable, so no problems with compatibility. This just booted, no problem, which I'm really thankful for. We do have some flexibility even in the height of the installation for this bracket. So six slots, and we can even go slightly higher, but I wouldn't recommend it because it would start to interfere with our uh, AIO block, and that's one of the disadvantages of going vertical. You need to use an AIO or some really low profile cooler because otherwise the heatsink will bump into your GPU. Of course, depending on the size of the graphics card, but with most even smaller graphics cards that are two slot, you still might uh, encounter some compatibility issues with a CPU heatsink air cooler. In terms of cooling, what do you guys think? Are we gonna get anything better? Because we do have additional vertical airflow movement that isn't completely blocked by the GPU. So more air we'll probably get for our AIO. And so this vertical path is slightly more unrestricted. Now, what surprised me here, though, are the hotter temperatures in vertical. And, you know, two degrees Celsius is really nothing. And even though the clock speeds are a bit lower, this should not be a deterrent from exploring this orientation, especially because when we disabled the bottom fans, we got even better temperatures. So clearly the air is getting a little bit too turbulent for efficient cooling, even though we're running those case fans at the bottom at 1000 RPM. And now it's finally time to upright this GPU beside the motherboard. First, we need to prep the system by removing everything we just installed. Oh, man, I really wish there was more room here. The upright bracket is actually installed on the side bracket over here, but this has to be facing the interior. It would be easier with these front brackets removed. Let's take off the radiator so you can see what I'm doing. So the upright bracket is installed on the side bracket and we're utilizing the 140 millimeter fan mounts. And just like that, that gets installed and secured with a few screws at the back. The GPU goes over here and uh, then we'll figure out how to actually route the riser cable. Nice, that's in there. I do have this 600 millimeter Gen 4 riser cable that is necessary to be used with this upright position kit. It's a little tricky to get there. The next challenge is routing and plugging in the DP cable. Now, the thing is, this bracket can be installed lower, but because I don't have much flexibility with how long this graphics card is, this uh, upright bracket position is at its highest. All right, so this actually plugged in. Not bad. Time to install the radiator. I cannot believe everything fits so far. I would say the biggest challenge for me right now is the power cable. There's just not that much room between the connector and the frame over here. <laughs> it's a janky fit, but it fit. I also want to relocate the bottom fans to the front just so that we have direct intake, just like with the other configurations. And because of the daisy chain design and a single cable for power and RGB, this reconfiguration is made so much easier. The two biggest challenges with the upright position are the power cables for the GPU, because right now they're just kind of stuffed at the front, but our front fans fit no problem. Everything around the motherboard is fine. We just have to route the riser cable. It's not the cleanest job at the back, but this reaches. Okay, now let's just hope <laughs> this thing boots. All right, the upright orientation works just fine on the first boot. <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. The front fans fit no problem. They're not bumping into the GPU. I cannot mount the radiator bracket at the bottom just because of the power cables. Maybe I can reposition them somewhere and the GPU is basically like touching the floor. This is probably the biggest graphics card you can fit inside this case, but like with a dual slot and some something that isn't that long uh, would be a lot more comfortable to work with because it would free up all this bottom space for radiator and set of fans. But you do have to keep in mind on how to route this riser cable from behind. I have to route it from behind the power supply. It's not very comfortable, but everything's working just fine. So I'm very curious to know what the temperatures would be like here. 
with this configuration. And so the temperatures are shockingly bad. It's like all the heat is trapped around the GPU. So unless you feel experimental, <laughs> the upright position should be left for marketing materials only, even though we have such good intake from the front. This really surprised me. Now we can flip the card in the upright position and it's only possible with the case in the reverse mode. There is a slight benefit with temperatures, but then we have nothing to directly support the top of the card aside from the radiator. And I'm not a huge fan of this access to the DP port at the bottom. And for our last configuration, here we have the case in reverse mode, a really unique way that does not require that much effort. Just make sure to follow the tutorial and no system inside the case to make your life easier. So in this reverse configuration, I would say the biggest visual benefit is the fact that now you're looking on the right side of the enclosure, therefore the case can be on the left side of your monitor, but also everything is upside down, both on the GPU and on the motherboard. But cooling wise, I'm expecting this to do very well just because we have unrestricted top intake, which is much better than slightly restricted bottom intake for the GPU otherwise, and this direct exhaust for our AIO. So whatever heat is being generated is being exhausted. And yeah, I would say this would perform very well. So finally, looking at the temperatures all side by side, the reverse orientation with the GPU up top is actually a solid choice for cool running components, but it's so close to our default, there's really no need to do the layout swap unless you want the PC on your left side. And going vertical is just slightly worse, likely due to the GPU fans facing the glass panel, and also a change in airflow pathways. And going to that strange upright position is absolutely pointless unless you are exploring the fun factor with doing something different with your PC. Honestly, I'm pretty surprised at the results. <laughs> you guys are probably too, but it gives you that confirmation that going the traditional classic horizontal GPU orientation is the best way to go. Going on the reverse is even better just because we have slightly more unrestrictive top intake directly for the GPU and going vertical or any upright position is just for the visuals. There is no performance benefit there. And if you want to showcase your GPU properly while sacrificing a little bit of performance and uh, temperatures, then that is obviously possible. And the process of getting there isn't that difficult. And at least I'm happy about that. But also they are aware that the temperatures and performance numbers might be different depending on your, the rest of your cooling configuration and the rest of the GPU heatsink and how it's designed, where the airflow is moving, etc. So if you are using a GPU like ours, the results should be consistent to what you should expect. But just keep in mind that they will vary based on your graphics card, you know? I am very curious to know which GPU orientation you are running in your PC. Let me know in the comments. I'm Dmitry. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you in the next video.